I hope you weren't waiting for the famous line, come with me to the Casbah. <laughs> it's not in there. Like a couple of other famous movie quotes, you dirty rat, and play it again, Sam. The phrase isn't in the film. Those lines all became famous through repeated misquoting. You simply could not have a demise like Pepe's in an American movie. Committing suicide as a way of escaping justice was prohibited by Hollywood's production code. In French poetic realism, however, choosing death over capture seemed to be the whole point. In the Hollywood remake, Algiers, Pepe doesn't get to take matters into his own hands. He's gunned down in the streets by the police. Now, as I mentioned at the top, the producer of Algiers, Walter Wanger, bought the U.S. rights to Pepe Lamoco, but kept it from being released in America until 1941, when the original was finally distributed stateside. It was a big hit, declared best foreign film by the National Board of Review, albeit four years late. By that time, Gabin's reputation had only grown, thanks to more poetically realistic films like Port of Shadows, Daybreak, The Human Beast, and especially director Jean Renoir's anti-war classic, Grand Illusion. By 1941, the Nazis had occupied France, and Gabin, as well as Renoir, and Pepe Lamoco's director, Julien Duvivier, decamped for America. But Hollywood proved a tough fit for these artists. 20th Century Fox tried to capitalize on the Gabin magic with its own stab at poetic realism, 1942's Moontide, co-starring Ida Lupino. Fritz Lang started the production as director, but left in a huff when he learned Gabin was having an affair with Marlena Dietrich. Lang was definitely the jealous type. Gabin's only other American film was 1944's The Imposter, written, produced, and directed by his old comrade, Duvivier. It was about a French criminal saved from the guillotine by Nazi bombs. He escapes by masquerading as a soldier and finds redemption fighting for the free French in Africa. Well, life imitated art, because after making the film, that's precisely what Gabin did. He left Hollywood to join the fight, earning France's highest military honor, the Croix de Guerre. Despite being a war hero in his home country, Gabin's star dimmed after the war. Poetic realism, like 1949's Walls of Malapaga, no longer inflamed the public's imagination, even though it did earn an Oscar as best foreign film. But Gabin, now middle-aged, made a comeback in the 1950s, mostly in crime movies. Starting with Jacques Becker's Touche Pas au Grisby in 1954, he became the gray eminence of French cinema, playing characters on both sides of the law. Audiences embraced Gabin once again, and for young French actors like Jean-Paul Belmondo, Jean Moreau, Alain Delon, and Brigitte Bardot, playing opposite the old man became a rite of passage. In later movies like Any Number Can Win and The Sicilian Clan, Gabin was still playing a variation of Pepe Lamoco, a crime kingpin now navigating his way into old age. Gabin kept making movies right up to his death in 1976 at the age of 72. Julien Duvivier's career paralleled Gabin's. After a few frustrating years in Hollywood, he angrily returned to France after Universal mangled his fantastic 1943 film, Flesh and Fantasy, cutting the film's four stories into two separate movies. Well, back home following the liberation, he made his greatest film, Panique, turning a noir novel by Georges Simenon into a symbolic excoriation of French collaborationists. He continued making films into the 1960s, although he was unfairly criticized by the French New Wave filmmakers, especially Francois Truffaut, for representing the kind of predictable craftsmanship they avidly subverted. For what it's worth, Truffaut hated Gabin too. Pepe Lamoco was remade one more time in Hollywood. 1948's Casbah turned it into a musical starring singer Tony Martin and Yvonne DiCarlo. Ironically, its director, John Barry, would spend most of his career working in France after being blacklisted in Hollywood in the early 1950s. Well, I hope the afterglow of Pepe Lamoco tied you over for a few weeks because Noir Alley has taken a break in April to make way for 31 days of Oscar. In the meantime, you should track down other Jean Gabin movies to watch. Suggest your favorites on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed. I'll see you back here in May for one of the most famous noirs ever 
Orson Welles' 1958 Carnival of Darkness, Touch of Evil. Abiento, not au revoir. <laughs>